Um, I think we're gonna get started with the recipe. Um, again, thanks so much for joining. I'm really excited for this. Uh, this is a favorite recipe, um, both in the Rainbow Plant Life community, but also in our own home here. Um, Tobo Scramble is just so kind of essential and basic, but also delicious and versatile. And I'll talk about all the tips on how to make it the best version today. So we're gonna start with our tofu. I have already uh, drained the tofu because I didn't want it to spill out here. Um, and this is firm tofu. Um, I'm gonna talk to you in a second about why I chose firm tofu for tofu scramble, but let's get started by, oh, there's still water left over, you know? Tried to drain it, didn't get all the water which leads me to the point about why we need to press our tofu first, because tofu is pretty watery. I already drained it and look, there's more coming up. So we don't want our scramble to be watery. The first tofu scramble I ever had at a restaurant was super watery. It was just like, like you could see the water pooling on the plate. We do not want that. We want a creamy texture with moisture, but not excess water. So we're gonna press our tofu for 15 minutes. If you have a tofu press, you can totally use that. I find that this method works generally even better um, and then I don't have to keep an extra gadget around, but tofu press is also totally fine. Take it, put it in a thin dish towel. Uh, you don't wanna use like a thick dish towel just cause uh, I feel like a thin dish towel, you can get out more water. You're gonna wrap it and then we're gonna take something heavy also, this towel says eat the rainbow, which is very fitting. Rainbow plant life. Sorry, I can't help myself. Sometimes I'm corny. So I'm gonna weigh it down with this extremely large cookbook. Not a vegan cookbook, but it is so heavy. It is my tofu press cookbook. We actually use it very often for tofu. And if you wanna weigh it down even more, put a skillet on top like this, like a heavy skillet, like a cast iron. So I'm gonna actually do this on a separate cutting board so we have this uh, cutting board clear. All right, I'm just gonna set this aside for now. It's a bit heavy. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, let me clear off the tofu juices. We like that about you, the corniness. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, okay, so in the meantime, while the tofu presses, let's make our sauce. So I think one of the reasons that tofu scramble can be a little boring is that it's often just tofu, salt, pepper, turmeric for color, a little bit of olive oil to cook, and that's it. It's like the tofu doesn't have the same consistency as eggs do. And I'm not saying every vegan that you make has to mimic some sort of animal protein, but I think for something as classic as a scrambled egg dish, it's nice to have some of that richness and creaminess that scrambled eggs does have. Um, traditionally, scrambled eggs have the egg yolks, which are high in fat. They have, they're usually cooked in butter. They sometimes have milk or cream. So my recipe tries to bring in some of that health, some of that fat, but back, let me start over. My recipe tries to bring in some of that fat, but back in a healthy plant-based way. Um, and the two secret ingredients we'll get to in a second, but we want to start with some flavor first. So flavor first, then texture. We've got a lot of different spices. So turmeric is often used in tofu scramble for that yellow color. We'll do that today as well, but I feel like a lot of people who are new to cooking or new to turmeric um, and spices in general use way too much turmeric. Turmeric is very potent and you want to err on the side of using less than you might. So uh, this, yeah, we're only going to use a quarter teaspoon and that will be plenty. It has a very strong flavor, so you don't want to overdo it. Um, so a quarter teaspoon of this. By the way, this is from the spice brand Diaspora Co. Excellent spices, uh, a small uh, queer Indian uh, owned business. They source ethically, uh, they ethically source their spices throughout South Asia. They work directly with small farmers. They pay their farmers like five to six times the national wage um, in those countries. So it's a really great spice brand to check out if you're interested. 
For other spices, we're gonna do just some garlic and onion powder, pretty, pretty basic spices. Um, we want a half teaspoon each of those. Um, and I didn't mention this at the top, but I think Max just put it in the chat. If you have specific questions as I'm going along in the recipe, like, oh, what was that spice or how much of it did you use? Feel free to pop that in the chat and Max will try to get those questions to me. But if you have more general questions about cooking or vegan stuff or my life or anything else, um, save those to the end because we will be doing a fuller Q&A at the end. So if you want to chat about Veganuary or like what I eat on a daily basis or what Max is like, you know, whatever, you can ask those questions after we finish with the recipe. Uh, okay, we have a question from Rami. Uh, what if there's only one tofu option? So if you don't have firm tofu at your grocery store, you'll probably have extra firm tofu. That's fine. Um, I would not press it for as long, maybe just like five minutes, um, or even just like squeeze it with your hands instead of doing a full press because to extra firm tofu already has a lot of the moisture out of it, so you don't want it to become too dry because that's how you end up with a dry tofu scramble. Okay, where did we leave off? Half teaspoon garlic powder, onion powder, quarter teaspoon turmeric. Okay, this is smoked chipotle. Um, I love the flavor. It adds this very subtle background, like slightly smoky heat. If you don't have it, just use red pepper flakes, but maybe less like a quarter teaspoon because they tend to be spicier. And uh, if you like spicy food, you know, you can use more. And this is my other favorite spice brand, Burlap and Barrel. You probably have heard me talk about them before in other videos. Again, a small business that really prioritizes ethical, transparent sourcing and paying farmers a, a living wage. And they source spices from all over the world and they're really unique. So if you are interested in spices, definitely check out Burlap and Barrel and Diaspora Co. Okay, half teaspoon chipotle flakes. Um, and now we need a quarter teaspoon of paprika. Paprika doesn't have that much flavor, but it is in combination with the turmeric gonna give us a really beautiful color to our tofu scramble. And lastly, I believe, if I can remember all the spices, we got onion, garlic, paprika, turmeric, chipotle, yep. Um, Indian black salt, it's also known as kalanamak. Um, it might be known as Himalayan um, mineral salt, black mineral salt, lots of different names for it. Um, this is funky. So if you've ever had it before, you know it smells a bit like sulfur, but hear me out. It adds this incredible umami, savory, eggy flavor to lots of dishes. So it's used often in Indian um, chutneys or achars or condiments. Um, and I like to use it in tofu-based dishes where you want that eggy flavor. Obviously tofu scramble is like the classic example of where you would want that eggy flavor. So we're gonna use a teaspoon of it, or half a teaspoon of it now. It has a little bit of saltiness, but not a lot compared to like a regular salt. And then we'll also finish the scramble with some at the end because some of the potency cooks off um, when you cook it. So we'll add a little bit more at the end for that true eggy flavor. Um, Max is pasting the recipe in the chat, um, but for all of our live streams in general, we always post the live stream kind of announcement at least a day in advance and we'll always leave a link to the recipe in that description box because we want you to be able to cook along with this so you can get the ingredients in advance. If you didn't get them in advance today, totally fine. You can just watch and stay for questions. Um, but if you wanna join a future live stream, always make sure to check the description box because we'll always post uh, a link to the recipe so you can print it out and follow along. Spices are done. Now we're gonna add a little more flavor with some nutritional yeast. We call it nooch in this house. And this doesn't really taste like anything on its own, but when you cook it with other ingredients, it really does add a subtle cheesy flavor. It's got a lot of natural umami in it just from the way it's made. Um, so it's a really powerful source of savoriness. We need two tablespoons of that. Okay, so that's our flavor for now. Now I wanna talk about texture, which I briefly mentioned earlier. 
two of my favorite ingredients that we're gonna use here to make this more indulgent and bring in some of that fat that scrambled eggs have, but in a plant-based way, are tahini and oat milk. You can use really any plant-based milk you want, but I feel like a creamy plant-based milk, not like a thin watery one is best for this. So if you have like a thinner almond milk, I would try to get a creamier plant-based milk. If you wanna do soy milk, that's fine. Uh, cashew milk should also be fine. I generally cook with oat milk, so that's what we have. And some tahini. Tahini is simply sesame seed, sesame seed, sesame seed butter, sesame seed paste. It is very rich and indulgent, but again, it's just made from sesame seeds and it's going to add a really lovely creamy texture to the tofu scramble. It's also going to add um, just a subtle, 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 subtle nuttiness, like very background. You're not, it's not going to taste like tahini. Uh, cameraman Max has disappeared, so I don't know where he went. <laughs> uh, maybe he's checking on something technical. Uh, okay, he's back. I just want to make sure we get a second angle on this. Max doing the most with all the angles. So we want a generous tablespoon of the tahini, so like a heaping tablespoon. And make sure tahini is well stirred. Um, if there's like a lot of oil at the top or it's like really like thick at the bottom, just give it a stir. Just a little bit more. Delicious. I'm gonna put this in the sink. How huge is this Oatly? In Germany, we have one liter. Yep, everything in America is large and in charge. We supersize everything, and that is the American way, for better or for worse. Probably for worse, but that is the American way. Um, for the milk, we want a half cup or 120 milliliters. I've got my scale, and for everyone joining, if you make my reg recipes regularly, you already know this, but for people who are new, um, all of my recipes on my blog, at least all of the recent ones in the last couple years, have measurements in both imperial American measurements like cups, as well as metric, me metric measurements like grams and milliliters. I actually prefer metric measurements. It's more accurate and more precise, um, but I offer both. So we're gonna use 120 milliliters or half cup of milk. And now we're just gonna give everything a whisk. Uh, the amazing Elizabeth asks, what tahini brands do you like using? Okay, so this is my genuinely favorite one. It's just incredible. It's from Seed and Mill. It is liquid gold. It is on the pricier side. So some of the um, other options I like that you can order online, it's a Beirut sesame paste. It's pretty affordable. Um, I also like Seed and Mill. It's really good or so that's seed and milk. I also really like Sum Tahini, that's really good. Um, if you have a Whole Foods, their house brand is not bad. Like I don't like it plain, like just drizzled over something, but in an application like this, I think it's totally good. And you can start to sort of smell the kalanamic. It's a little funky, but it honestly, it tastes, it makes things taste eggy, which I think is incredible that one ingredient can do that. It's actually a volcanic salt. It's found in the Himalayan mountains and it's kiln fired. So like, because of that, it has that very unique flavor and aroma that you wouldn't get like with a sea salt. Okay, our sauce is done and I think we might need a couple more minutes on the tofu. So in the meantime, if you have questions about the recipe, I'll answer those. And I'll also tell you why I chose tofu scramble for our first live stream of 2023. So I think at the beginning of the year, we're all kind of like looking to get back into routines after the holidays. And I think tofu scramble is just such an incredible staple to have in your rotation. It's protein packed. There's 15 grams of protein per serving. It's wholesome, but this version tastes 
creamy and delicious and something you'd want to eat on a regular basis. It's easy and quick to make. You can make certain things ahead of time. For instance, if you want to save time in the morning, you can press and crumble your tofu the night before. I know a lot of you who have made this recipe will make like a huge batch of the spice blend and then just stick it in your spice cabinet or your pantry for a few months and then you can save time that way. It's also easy to make a big batch so you can have it like every day for breakfast if you want. And the other reason I wanted to make this for this live stream is that it's Veganuary and a lot of people who are new to veganism um, or trying it out for a month, um, it's often best to start with simple basics like tofu scramble and instead of trying to start with the most complicated recipes um, and get overwhelmed. And so I wanted to provide this as an option for people who are tuning in who are maybe new to a plant-based diet um, or participating in Veganuary. So that's why I chose tofu scramble. Rachel asks, how do you like to eat your tofu scramble? Breakfast sandwiches with potatoes, etc." Good question. Um, so if it's a quick weekday, I'll just do some seeded whole grain toast or some toast from like a slice of bread from the bakery with some avocado. Um, but today I'm gonna show you my favorite brunch way to serve it like on the weekends. Uh, it is so delicious. There's a yogurt sauce, there's chili oil, there's pita, there's salad. It's just phenomenal. Um, sometimes we'll do uh, burritos. I've got a breakfast burrito video on my channel um, with, we'll do the tofu scramble with my queso, which is five minutes to make, but so incredible. Um, add in some salsa or pico de gallo. Um, it's delicious. Um, sometimes I just do it over rice. I'll do it over rice with chili crisps for like an Asian, East Asian kind of inspired dish. Um, and that is phenomenal as well. Today, <laughs> I alluded to, we're gonna make kind of a Middle Eastern inspired brunch plate. We're gonna have the tofu scramble. We're gonna have some za'atar toasted pita. We're gonna have a yogurt sauce with chili oil. We're gonna have a little bit of a light salad. It's gonna be kind of like a scooping, sharing plate. I don't know why my hands are doing this, like scooping, sharing plate um, with Middle Eastern flavors. I absolutely love it. Max loves it. And uh, I think you guys will love it, so. Oh, black pepper in the ingredients. Yes, I forgot the black pepper. Thank you for the reminder. Also, if you didn't know, black pepper has a compound in it that helps your body activate the compounds in turmeric. So the compound in turmeric that is responsible for the anti-inflammatory, antibacterial properties is called curcumin. There's something in black pepper, I believe in white pepper, also called piperin, piperine, and that helps your body absorb it more. So can't forget that. Thanks for the reminder. I never measure black pepper, really, unless it's like a, a specific type of recipe. I just eyeball it, so it's up to you. All right, let's get our tofu. Grab this book off. All right, I don't know how, if you can really see, but a lot of water has come out. This is all soaked. So this is why we press the tofu, because uh, you don't want a water scramble. And the reason I like firm tofu, I don't think I mentioned it, is it has, um, in my experience for tofu scramble, the best consistency similar to eggs. So extra firm, again, it's fine, but it's gonna give you a kind of a little drier, um, firmer texture. And then something like soft tofu is gonna to be a little too soft, at least for me. If you love a soft scrambled egg, maybe you could try soft tofu. And then silken tofu to me is just way too soft and, and, and uh, too watery. Uh, someone asked, what's in the mug? Anything fun? It's matcha. I love matcha. I have it most mornings. I talk about that, I talk about that in our latest video, the one I mentioned earlier, Eight Habits um, for More Energy. Um, so I've got my matcha here. Okay, now we're gonna crumble the tofu. And for tofu scramble, you want just like chunks. It doesn't have to be anything precise. You're not gonna get the same size chunks, even if you tried. Uh, so just... And if some of them are big, that's okay because when you're cooking the scramble later in the pan, you'll be able to like smash them up more to smaller pieces. Oh, 
Uh, while I crumble the tofu, if there are any questions about the recipe, go ahead and pop them in the chat and Max will try to bring them up on screen. Kimberly says, have made this recipe before. It was really good. Need to leave the chili flakes out next time though since I have baby mouth. Yes, I don't taste any spice at all in this, but again, I love spicy food. So if you really can't tolerate spicy food, go ahead and leave out the chipotle flakes or add just like a tiny pinch if you want. Um, Nat Natalia asks, where did you get your large cutting board from? This is a boost block, it's B-O-O-S. You can buy them on the Boost Block website um, or on Amazon. Like um, some kitchen stores might sell them. They're very sturdy. I love them. It's kind of just like having a wooden countertop, like a small wooden countertop instead. Uh, Rami asks, smoked or sweet paprika? It's uh, just a regular sweet or hot paprika. Um, you could do smoked if you wanted just like a subtle smokiness. That would be nice. And that's another great thing about this recipe is that like you can customize the spices. So like if you've made the original recipe and love it, but you maybe want to try something different, do like an Indian spice blend or a Mexican spice blend. You can even just use your favorite pre-made spice blend. Um, and then you can just uh, vary the flavors that way. Doug asks, is there a substitute for the Indian black salt? Unfortunately, no. You can leave it out and just use like kosher salt or sea salt. But if you want that eggy flavor, that, that's the only way you're going to get it is through the Indian black salt. It's also called kalanamak. If you don't have it though, it, the texture is still great and the flavor is still nice. It's just not going to have that like eggy flavor you would associate with scrambled eggs. I'm normally a lot faster when I'm just cooking by myself and not doing a live. Um, it should only take you like a minute to crumble the tofu, but here I am eight minutes later. You want to talk about the texture, what it should look like? Um, so yeah, like as you can see, this texture looks, you know, it's, it's, it's not wet anymore, but it's still got some softness to it. And I think that's why I love firm tofu for this recipe is because you're gonna get that like soft, creamy texture that you want in scrambled eggs, um, not dryness and not like something too wet. All right, scramble or crumble, <laughs> tofu is crumbled. Okay, let's clear some space. And let's bring over our portable burner so we can cook everything here and show it to you very easily. I don't normally cook on this at home. This is just to make filming easier. Okay. Get our pan, spatula, spatule. It's a spatula, but sometimes I just pronounce things weird. I have an old video where I refer to guacamole as guacamole, just like as a joke, and there are multiple comments being like, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it's actually pronounced guacamole. And I'm like, thank you, did not know that. I, I did know that. Um, so we've got a large nonstick pan here. This is a 12 inch pan. I don't love cooking with nonstick pans as much as like a cast iron or stainless steel pan because those are just better quality pans, but tofu tends to stick. So I usually cook tofu in a nonstick. If you have a really well seasoned cast iron pan, you could use that instead, but just to keep things easy, I'm using a 12 inch nonstick pan. We're going to preheat this over medium high heat or whatever this fake stove tells me is medium high heat. Always go lower than you think. 
yeah, this thing heats up really quite high. It's very powerful. Um, let's see. Uh, Everlight SV says, what about freezing the tofu? So I love freezing tofu for a lot of different reasons. I don't think it's really necessary with tofu scramble. Uh, I think it makes it like freezing tofu will make it chewy, but I don't really want chewiness in my tofu scramble. So the recipe calls for like a tablespoon of olive oil. I'm not gonna measure it here, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, do whatever you want. We'll let that heat up for a minute. And I should have mentioned the Indian black salt you can order online, but if you have an Indian grocery store in your area, they will definitely sell it and it'll be cheaper than ordering it online. Time to add the tofu. Nice little sizzle sound we've got. Try to spread it out as much as you can in a single layer. I'm gonna set a timer so don't forget about it because I definitely will I'm talking. So we want this to go on for five to seven minutes. You don't want to stir it too frequently because you want to get a little bit of a nice golden brown exterior. So you get just a subtle kind of, not even crispy, but just like the subtle texture. Um, and then when you coat it the, in the eggy sauce, you get like, I don't know, I think you get the best of both textures. So don't stir it too often. I'm just checking on the heat level on this because I don't really know what medium high is on this burner. It's just kind of a guessing game. If there are any questions as the tofu is cooking, We'll try to put them on the screen. So if you have questions about the specific recipe, let us know. And again, we will answer questions, or I will answer questions at the end of the recipe about other things if you have them. Um, this nonstick pan is from Tramantia, Tramantina. Um, you can order online. A lot of restaurant chefs use it. I think it's the best nonstick pan I've used in terms of like durability and the ability to brown foods. One of the reasons I don't love nonstick pans in addition to like them not lasting for a very long time is that they don't brown foods very well, but this one does a really good job. Chris asks, do you struggle with the browning when you crumble it? Um, if you don't stir too frequently and you use high enough heat and a decent amount of um, cooking fat like olive oil, it should brown, although we don't need it to like crisp up and brown like we would want like a baked or a, a, like a fried tofu to do because we're gonna coat it in an eggy sauce after this, so it's gonna be soft. Um, but in general, if you're making tofu, um, the things you want to do to make sure that it browns well is to either press it or freeze the tofu, get out as much water as you can, um, use relatively high heat, um, use a decent amount of cooking fat if you're pan frying it. Um, if you're baking it, do a fairly high temperature. I like to do 425. Um, there's a lot of different tips for tofu and I feel like we need to do a whole video on tofu, but that's my short answer. And Marie says, can't make tofu scramble because I'm busy making your creamy white bean soup with kale. Oh, that's so nice. That's one of my kind of also staple winter recipes, creamy white bean soup with kale. It's so wholesome. It's got like five vegetables in there, but it's creamy. Um, it's really lovely. It's um, one of the recipes featured in the 31 days of vegan challenge I mentioned earlier. And you can see we're already starting to develop a little bit of a light brown golden coating because we're not stirring too frequently. 
And if you see any big pieces, like too big, you can just use a flat ended spatula like this to break them up. And it also kind of depends on like how big of a how big of the pieces do you like? Do you like them really small? Do you like them on the bigger side? I think everyone has um, probably their own preference. Uh, the Mona Lisa <laughs> asks how much protein is in this lovely dish. Um, there's about 15 grams of protein per serving. I think it's three servings. It's going to depend a little bit on the brand of tofu you use and the milk you use and the tahini you use. There's slightly varying amounts of protein in each of these um, ingredients depending on your brand. Six says, whoever's doing the live editing is doing a great job. Kudos, Max. Um, for those of you who don't know, Max is my business partner and my life partner. And he is behind the camera today doing a fantastic job. So thank you, Max. And just to jump off the um, question about protein, uh, we are going to have very soon a new video dealing with vegan protein stuff. So if you are looking to incorporate more protein-heavy meals into your diet, uh, stay tuned. We'll have something coming your way soon. By soon, I mean next weekend, okay? I, I told, I'm, I'm telling you now. All right, this is almost looking good. I think just maybe 30 more seconds. give our sauce a whisk before we add it again. All right, we're gonna add in our eggy sauce with the spices and the tahini and the milk. So if you traditionally or typically like a wetter, like a more moist scramble, just cook this for like 30 to 60 seconds. If you want something a little bit more, li less liquidy, like a little bit drier, just do a couple minutes. I prefer something a little bit less saucy. So I'll probably cook this for 20 minutes. Although this burner, I have no idea how long anything takes. You can see we've got this nice, gorgeous, yellowish-orange color. That's from the turmeric plus paprika mixture. If you can tell, it's got this nice, saucy, soft consistency, almost, again, like scrambled eggs would. Nothing dry here, nothing rubbery here. Will Young, excellent, you got this. Will Young, the best. Can we get a little round of applause for Will Young? Will Young has a fantastic vegan cooking channel. Definitely check it out. I'm sure most of you here already know his channel, but if you don't, go check it out. This looks good to me now, so I'm gonna turn off the heat. Take it off this burner. Okay, so I know I did a lot of talking, but here's my timer from the time I added the tofu. That's eight minutes. So this is a super quick dish. Again, you can make it even quicker in the morning if you press and crumble your tofu the night before and if you make a big batch of the spice blend and it'll stay good in your pantry for three, four or five months. Uh, 
Um, now to finish this, as I mentioned earlier, a little more kalanamak, the black salt, because it has, again, you're gonna get the most flavor out of it at the very end. You'll get some flavor from it now, but you get more of that immediate eggy flavor to the tip of your tongue right now if you add it at the end. Add a little bit, start with just a little bit if you're new to it, then taste it and add more as needed. And I also add just a tiny bit of regular salt too because um, the Kalanamak doesn't have a lot, as much saltiness as it does flavor. So to bring all the flavors out together, I also add a little bit of kosher salt. Yum! Okay, so you could just serve this as is, like over toast or whatever, something simple. We're gonna make something even better today. Let me just give this a taste. Hot, hot. Why do I do this? It's so hot. It's so... Mm. You would think I would know better by now. Uh, that's the oven preheating. I'll let you know what that's for in a second. Hot. It's like slowly moving through my throat now and into my stomach and it's very hot. I regret this, um, but I think it needs a little more kalanamic. And if you're someone who's like, I hate the taste of eggs, like blah, 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 don't use this. Like you don't need this if you don't, are not looking for that. But if you do enjoy the taste of eggs or did enjoy the taste of eggs when you weren't vegan, this is a really nice way to kind of emulate that experience. All right, she should be done. Lovely. I'm gonna put her aside for now. And we're gonna make the rest of our brunch plate. If you are joining late, we're gonna turn our tofu scramble into a Middle Eastern inspired brunch plate. It is my favorite, possibly favorite way to serve it. I have a lot of favorite ways to serve this because it's so versatile. Um, first, we need to make our chili oil. So let me bring back the stove. It's a little mini stove. So if you have a smaller saucepan than this, I would use that. This is just the, this is, I have a smaller one, but it won't fit on this. So that's why I'm using a bigger one. And we want some olive oil and a kind of a milder chili flake. Since this is a Middle Eastern inspired recipe, I'm using a Middle Eastern chili flake. This is um, similar to Aleppo pepper. This is, uh, that's a milder chili flake traditionally grown in Aleppo, Syria. Unfortunately, because of the Syrian civil war, it's hard to grow it there now. It's usually grown other places, um, but it's, a little fruity, it's a little smoky, it's really lovely, it's one of my favorite ingredients. I use it like I would red pepper flakes, but in greater amounts, because it's um, not as spicy. And we're gonna make a simple, simple chili infused oil with this. So in the description box, I had included um, the measurements for this, um, if you wanted to follow along. It's technically two tablespoons of olive oil for a tablespoon of the chili flakes, but because this pan is on the bigger side, I do want to double the recipe just because I don't want the chili flakes to burn in such a small amount of oil on here. Um, you don't have to do that if you have a smaller saucepan. And if you have a clean sterilized jar, the chili oil will stay good on your pan in your pantry or on your counter for quite some time, month, maybe longer, um, or you can refrigerate it. All right, so we're gonna add, again, it, the recipe was two tablespoons, but I'm gonna do four tablespoons just because my pan is not small enough. So I'm just doubling it. And as kind of like a, a bonus slash, thank you for being here at this live stream, this kind of recipe will be exclusively here. It doesn't exist on my blog, so um, only you guys get to have it. And then we're gonna do two tablespoons of this. I think I have that, hopefully I have enough in here. If not, I have some more in my spice cabinet. Also love these burl up and barrel spice bottles because you can fit an entire tablespoon measuring thing in there, it's pretty big. Okay, this is not quite two tablespoons, so 
One second. So you basically want to just use really low heat for this because you don't want it to burn. Um, and once it comes to like the gentlest simmer, you want to just let that hang out for five minutes and maybe stir occasionally. Um, just keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. Can you get a look in here or no? Is it too hard? Trying to tilt it so you can see. Wow, there we go. So it's just two ingredients. I was using Aleppo pepper or something very similar to Aleppo pepper and um, extra virgin olive oil. If you wanted to do this with red pepper flakes, use a lot less because they are spicier. I think I have the amount in the description box of this video. Um, I don't know if off the top of my head, but it's probably like a teaspoon or something like that because red pepper flakes are a lot spicier. Um, but if you are interested in like expanding your spice cabinet, Aleppo pepper is fabulous and you can order it again from Burlap and Barrel, which is the brand I used. You can order it online. If you have a Middle Eastern grocery store near you, they will have it there as well. Um, while we wait for this to come to a simmer, what kind of questions do we have about the recipe? Or, um, you know, something adjacent to the recipe. <laughs> Sherry says, I'd love to see your pantry of spices. Um, it is a hot mess. There's probably a hundred plus spices in there. We use a lot. We love spices. Um, but if you guys have specific requests for a spice video, we can definitely consider that. Let us know in the, in the chat, like thumbs up if you really want to see a spice video. Uh, Peanut Butter Princess says, will it taste like tahini sesame? This tofu scramble will not taste like that unless you go overboard. Uh, it's gonna have like a, just a well-balanced flavor. You'll taste a little bit of spice. You'll taste um, a little bit of the eggy flavor from the kalanamik, uh, but it doesn't taste like tahini. Unless your tahini is super, super bitter, that might influence the final flavor. I'm seeing some thumbs up from folks who'd like to see a spice video. Okay, because I feel like there's so much to cover. Uh, I often get like, what are your favorite spices? And like, that's not a question I can answer because it depends on the type of cuisine. It depends on the recipe. Um, and so like, I can say I love cumin, but like that doesn't really help you. So um, we'll try to do a spice video in the future. Charlotte asks, just joined, is it still tofu scramble? So we just finished the tofu scramble. It's hanging out over there. Right now we're making the extra components to go with our tofu scramble. Um, this is a chili oil that we're starting here. And while it goes, cause it's kind of slow, let's make the other, let's make the other components. This is why I enjoy doing live streams cause you get to actually see what it's like to be in the kitchen with me, a very clumsy person, um, hopefully, that is enjoyable for you. Why don't you move back to the stove? No, no, take off the heat. Oh, okay. The I'm gonna move the chili oil to this actual stove over there that you can't really see, just um, because this burner's, I think, too strong for the chili oil. having to play some gymnastics over here. Okay. There we go. Once I'll be back on camera in a second. Just making sure the chili oil is at the right heat. All right, let's move this out of the way. Um, 
there's a question about sumac. Do you know that one? Yes, sumac is a lovely spice often, again, used in Middle Eastern cuisine. It is bright and tangy and it basically has like the tartness of lemon juice without the actual like liquid. I love it. Um, now let's work on our yogurt sauce. Okay, that's looking good. So let me get the yogurt. I'm a huge fan of a yogurt sauce and these days you can get really high quality vegan yogurt that you won't even really realize is not dairy based. This one is fabulous. It is Kulina. Only ingredients are hand shucked coconut, water, agar, and probiotics. So like very simple, incredible texture as you will see. I really love it if you can find it. Um, it's fabulous. We're gonna do the whole container. The recipe in the description box says a half cup or 112 grams. This is 140 grams, slightly more. So we'll just adjust accordingly but most yogurt containers single serve come with like a five ounce container. So if that's what you have, feel free to use that instead of a half cup. Um, and we're also going to add a few flavorings. So we're going to add one raw garlic clove. Uh, that's going to add like that sharp zing and garlicky flavor that I love. And we'll just mince up this garlic clove. If you have um, a garlic press, I know some people like that, you can use that. If you saw my video on kitchen tools, and it's basically inexpensive kitchen tools under $20 that I love, you will know I do not like a garlic press. But if it works for you, feel free to use that. Just check on the chili oil, see how it's doing. Give it a stir. Um, there's a question, do you have a favorite knife? Yes, yeah, so the ones I'm using right now, or the one I'm using right now is from Khan Kitchen, K-A-N. I've shared their knives a bunch of times. Uh, they're actually in most of my videos in the description box um, linked. Um, it's a small business. They make extremely high quality Japanese style knives. Um, so I would really recommend those. If you live in New York City, like I used to do, there's an extremely wonderful Japanese knife store, right? It's Japanese. Mm -hmm. It's called Korin, K-O-R-I-N. And we used to buy our knives there. They have a huge selection and they're really high quality as well. And they have def different budgets too. So like you can spend $800 on a knife if you want, but you can also get a pretty good one for like what, $60, $100? Yeah. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna kill the heat on the chili oil for now, just so it doesn't overcook. And we're gonna let it um, just cool over here a bit. All right, our garlic is pretty finely minced. That looks good. Scoop it up with my bench scraper so don't dull the knife blade. Okay, now we're going to add some lemon to add. The acidity is going to brighten the yogurt sauce. And um, the amount you need really depends on um, your quality of yogurt. So this one is pretty tart and tangy, so don't think you need as much. But if yours has kind of a more neutral flavor, you might want to use more. Let me give this a rinse. OK, 
because I was just like, we should just add some lemon zest for extra flavor. I don't think the recipe calls for it, but might as well if we're adding the juice. Oftentimes the zest is gonna make it even better. Boris asks, have you made your own vegan yogurt? Yes, if you have my first cookbook, the Vegan Instant Pot Cookbook, there is a homemade coconut yogurt in there that is amazing. It is like thick and tangy and creamy and rich. But I generally go with store-bought just because there are a lot of good options these days. That looks nice. Lemon zest is optional, but I feel like it's a nice, a nice choice here. going to juice with my hands. I know I normally use a citrus squeezer, but I'm just eyeballing it today. The recipe says two to three teaspoons. That's for a half cup. I'm using a little bit more, so I'm just going to add a little bit more juice as well. And because this is such a simple sauce, like I don't really strictly adhere to the measurements. Um, I'll just taste it as I go. And then we need a quarter teaspoon of dried mint. This is a really lovely ingredient used in a lot of different Middle Eastern recipes as well. If you don't have it, you can omit it, it's fine. And some salt and pepper. And if you have um, general cooking questions or just general questions about anything, like my life or whatever, um, save those until we are done with the recipe and we will definitely get to those. Okay. Pepper, freshly cracked always. Spoon, spoon. Mitch says, this is so delightful. Thanks for doing it. Aww. I'm so glad you think so. Thanks for being here. I love doing these lives. I think they're a really fun way for me to like hang out with you guys um, and to like, I don't know, for you guys to just be in my kitchen with me. Let's give this a taste. Oh, that's so good. A little more lemon juice. A little more salt. And this is like a general approach to my cooking is to like season and taste as you go. If you have the opportunity to fix a dish before it's too late, like do it. Like season to taste, add more acidity, add more salt, add more whatever you need to make it taste like you want it to. If the only time you're tasting your dish is at the very end, like you don't know what's gonna taste like. It could be really bad. So try to taste as you go. Yogurt sauce is done. And now we're gonna do the salad. Let me go get the greens. make some space. Oy. Okay. While, before I make the salad, I want to get the pita going in the oven. Um, Oh, thanks so much for the super chat, Charlie. That's really, really generous and very sweet. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad you love my recipes and that's very, very generous. Thank you. Um, okay, for the pita, this probably serves four people, maybe three, depending on your appetite. Um, it's just Max and I here today, so I'm only gonna do two pitas. Um, 
Any pita that's vegan friendly is fine, up to you. Um, this one's a little torn, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna stick this in the oven at 325 Fahrenheit. Uh, I wanna guess that's like 160, 165 Celsius, but I don't know for sure. Um, it is 162.778, thank you for checking, Max. Um, this is gonna go in for about seven minutes. All right, while the pita bakes, actually, let me set a reminder, I will absolutely forget about it. Put this timer on. There we go. We'll do our salad. I love having a salad for a brunch, just a nice way to get some greens in. Any lettuce, any soft lettuce is fine. I wouldn't really do like a kale or something like too crunchy, not too crunchy, too like, I don't know, too chewy, I guess, because we're not really doing a vinaigrette. We're doing a super simple chili oil plus lemon juice. So you want something that has like a mild flavor and a soft, soft enough texture so that it, it doesn't need like a full vinaigrette. And the recipe calls for three to four cups of salad greens. Again, it's just Max and I here, so I'm eyeballing what I think we will eat. This is Little Gem Lettuce, by the way. This is, I think of Romaine's baby cousin. It is a little bit smaller and a little more tender than Romaine. If you have butter lettuce, that would be great. If you have like a mesclun or a salad mix that's kind of on the softer side, that's great too. Does this look like enough salad for us or should I make more? A little more, right? Like that would be good enough for today. Salad. This is like an extremely simple salad. And depending on how much salad greens you use, you'll want to adjust with the amount of chili oil and lemon juice. Let me get salt. So I typically use kosher salt in my cooking because it has a very coarse texture, so it's easy to pinch. It's cheap. It's the least salty salt, tablespoon for tablespoon, so it's harder to oversalt your food. But when I'm making something raw, like a salad or doing a finishing, I like a good quality sea salt because it makes a slight difference. So I've got some nice sea salt here. I like to directly add a little bit of salt and pepper to the leaves just to give the lettuce a little flavor boost. Pita has about three-ish more minutes, so we'll be able to finish everything before then. Now I'm gonna take some of the chili oil and just drizzle it on top. So some of the chili oil will go onto the yogurt sauce and some of it will go in this lovely salad. Can we get some camera on this? All right, let's get some chili oil on here. And again, this is not like a super spicy chili oil. Um, Aleppo pepper is fairly mild, so it's gonna have heat, but not like, it's not gonna be like a super spicy salad. And then we'll just do the lemon. Again, I like to normally use a squeezer, but just keeping things raw cash with my hands today. Squeezing over my fingers to catch the seeds. 
Uh, Aramite, oh, thanks so much for the super chat, Aramite. That's so, it's very much appreciated. Thank you, as always, to everyone who supports this channel, whether it's with your views or a super chat or your comments. Um, we wouldn't be here without you guys, so thank you. I think someone asked about how long to press the tofu. I did 15 minutes. I think at least 10 minutes is probably necessary for firm tofu for this recipe. Um, if you forget about it and it's been 30 minutes, that's fine too. And now we're just gonna toss this together. And then you just give it a taste. Does it need more salt? Does it need more lemon? Does it need more chili oil? If you have um, other crunchy vegetables in your fridge like cucumber or, um, I don't know, sliced cabbage or green bell radishes, definitely not green bell peppers, Max. Um, feel free to add those in here. Well, I don't know where I'm going. Let me get a fork. Give this a taste. Okay. Mmm. That chili oil does so much work here. Phenomenal. Mmm. Mm-mm. So good. Um, please go get some Olapa pepper. It is so good in this recipe and so good in so many things. Amanda says, hi, I just want to thank you so much for sharing so many raising recipes. I've been participating in the 31 Days of Vegan Challenge and I'm excited to try this Tobo Scrim. Oh, I'm so glad you're participating in the challenge. Again, I mentioned this earlier, so I'm just trying to digest a piece of lettuce. Does not want to go down my throat. We are hosting a Rainbow Plant Life 31 Days of Vegan Challenge. Basically, it is a free challenge. If you sign up, we will email you a delicious res recipe every day during the month of January to kind of kickstart your new year, get you excited about cooking vegan food. You pick and choose whichever recipes you want to make based on what you have at home, what you like to make, and then you can enter to win some amazing prizes by sending us photos of the recipe you make. There are specific instructions um, in this blog post that Max has put up on the camera or on the screen. And um, I'm so glad that so many of you have already joined. And if you'd like to join again, check out that blog post. All right, let's check on the pita. This timer is done. Turn off the oven. I'm just gonna do one pita for now. And this is where it gets really good. Cause store-bought pita can be not that exciting, but let me show you what I like to do. Get a little bit of that chili oil. Yeah. That's already looking so much better than before. Woo! And we're gonna take some za'atar. Za'atar, if you're not familiar with, it's again used commonly in a lot of different Middle Eastern cuisines. It is a slightly crunchy, earthy, herby condiment, usually made with toasted sesame seeds, um, some sort of herb like thyme or marjoram or oregano. Um, typically it's made with za'atar itself, which is wild thyme. It's grown in different parts of the Middle East. Um, we obviously don't really have that here, um, or if we do, it's hard to find. And sumac, um, this is my favorite brand. I also like to make it at home myself because it's pretty easy. And we're just gonna generously sprinkle some on top. Yum, it smells amazing. This is the brand, again, I like. It's called ZNZ, &Z, and you can order it online. Just grab our knife again, and we'll just slice it up. So for the pita, you can do um, wedges, like, like uh, triangles, if you want like smaller pieces, or if you want to stuff your pita, you could just do halves. 
Do you have a, I think we're going to do wedges next. Yeah? Sure. I shouldn't cut on my plate. I am salivating at the mouth. Oh, it smells so good. And the reason I call this a brunch plate is that it's a very fun thing to like share. Um, so you got your little pita wedges, you got your salad, you got your yogurt sauce, you got your tofu scramble. Let's go get that tofu scramble. The amazing Lizbeth. Thank you so much for your uh, super chat and for the amount of chili oil you used. Yes. We are not afraid of a little chili oil here. Oops. Okay. Yum. Oh, I'm spilling. Okay. Let's put that there. Wow. I am super excited. Keep dropping a towel here. I know this doesn't really matter to most people, but as a food photographer, I'm just going to clean up the plate a little bit for better presentation. Okay, salad. If you're like, salad is boring, you haven't had salad with chili oil. Phenomenal. And again, you should tailor the amount of salad and pita you make to how many people you're serving. So if it's just two of you like it is today for me and Max, just serve the rest of the tofu scramble or refrigerate the rest of the tofu scramble for tomorrow or for two days from now, whatever. Make, you know, two pitas, make a smaller amount of salad. The yogurt sauce will stay good in your fridge for three, four days. So you can always use it in another recipe. Get that yogurt sauce. Ooh. And to make that yogurt sauce even better, you know what's happening. We're getting some chili oil on top. Yeah. Woo! Look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh my God, I'm so excited. And then if you have leftover chili oil, I mentioned this, but um, store it in a sterilized jar on your counter for at least a month or um, in the fridge if you don't have a sterilized jar. Wow, wow, wow. Look at this. Max, do we got some eyes on this? Okay, Max is so blessed eating all that good food all the time. You know what? He really is. He really is. <laughs> Max um, has very high standards for a food but never cooks. So he's got like the best of both worlds. He gets to like critique poor quality food and then eat the best food and never have to cook. But he does the dishes. So, you know, he does, he does, his, he does his part. <sighs> okay. I wish you guys could... I wish there was like a, a virtual feature where you could participate in this. But you can make this recipe now at home. You have the recipe now. You've seen how it's done. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Honestly, this is phenomenal. I hope you all try it. I'm going to um, temporarily sign off for folks who are watching the replay in the future so they don't get bored with all the questions at the end. Thank you so much for watching, um, and I hope you enjoy this recipe.